after studying this module you shall be able to know about the concept of discriminant analysis learn the types and assumptions related to the concept and know about the SPSS analysis for discriminant analysis discriminant analysis in the previous few modules we have discussed the concepts related to regression and its application to the multivariate techniques one has understood that a dependent variable the criterion can be predicted if one has knowledge on independent variables that is the regressors of course both the regressors and the criterion have to be continuous data sometimes the research study requires the qualitative or the categorical dependent variables to be predicted in such circumstances two regression techniques are useful first is logistic regression analysis and the other is discriminant functional analysis this current module focuses on the latter technique that is the discriminant functional analysis a researcher wishes to ascertain if the rise of hypertension among the middle-aged men can be ascribed to the smoking and drinking behaviors a representative sample of the middle-aged men was taken and the data was collected for hypertension which was taken as present or absent and smoking and drinking behaviors is it possible to predict the hypertension upon their data for smoking and drinking using the DFA or the discriminant functional analysis yes and we shall see how the module explains this problem to us the discriminant functional analysis or the DFA the concept of discriminant functional variate the discriminant function analysis is a statistical analysis to predict a categorical dependent variable called a grouping variable by one or more continuous or binary independent variables called the predictor variables the original dichotomous discriminant analysis was developed by Sir Ronald Fisher in 1936 it is different from an ANOVA or MANOVA which is used to predict one or multiple continuous dependent variables by one or more independent categorical variables we have done all this in the previous modules the discriminant functional analysis is useful in determining whether a set of variables is effective in predicting category membership discriminant analysis is used when groups are known a priori like in cluster analysis each case must have a score on one or more quantitative predictor measures and a score on a group measure in simple terms discriminant functional analysis is classification the act of distributing things into groups classes or categories of the same type moreover it is a useful follow up procedure to a manova instead of doing a series of one way anovas for ascertaining how the group differ on the composite dependent variable in this case a significant f test allows classification based on a linear combinations of predictor variables terminology can get confusing here as in manova the dependent variables are the predictor variables and the independent variables are the grouping variables so the reader while going through the text of this module should keep in mind this confusion in the terminology and be clear about it when there are more variables which significantly predict the criteria then the solution can be identifying the underlying dimensions these linear combinations of the dependent variables are known as variates they are latent variables or factors these linear variates are then used to separate the persons into categories or the groups like hypertension present or hypertension absent the problem we discussed in the beginning of the text therefore these variates are referred to as discriminant functions 
or discriminant functions vary it. Several discriminant functions can be extracted from a set of dependent variables. One would remember that in multiple regression only one regression function is possible and that includes all the predictor variables. Not here. So a discriminant function is where the aim is to maximize the differences between the groups. Given below are the equations 1, 2 and 3 that discuss how variates can be arrived at. Look at the equation 1, equation 2 and equation 3 and we will explain them just now. See the equation 1 is talking about only the variables, the equation 2 talks about the dependent variables and the third equation translates into the variables that we have used and makes it more meaningful for the readers. The equation 1 simple regression equation with two predictor variables. The subsequent equations 2 and 3 can be discriminant functions derived. The B values in the equation are the weights and show the relative proportion of each dependent variable to the variate. Now this B value is something that we have done in multiple regression also. The B value is derived from the eigenvectors of the matrix as this is a complex mathematical procedure involving vector matrix the discussion is not possible here in detail. So the reader may refer to the multivariate statistics books for further in understanding. As the regression 1 has only two variables only one variate function can be derived because with two variables one function can be derived and as the number of variables increases in the equation we may have more and more variates coming out of it if the possibility is according to the data obtained. In order to generate the discriminant functions from the data a complex mathematical procedure is followed known as the maximization principle. This implies that the ratio of systematic to unsystematic variance is maximum for the discriminant function. Of course, subsequently derived functions will have smaller value, value of this ratio. So the first function that is derived has the maximum ratio of systematic to unsystematic variance. This systematic to unsystematic variance ratio is similar to the F ratio of ANOVA that we have already discussed in our modules. So when the first function is said to have the maximum share of the variance ratio, it also implies that is it this function, the first function that we have derived, it would explain the maximum ratio or the maximum share of the F ratio also. Of course, the real research data may not be so simple. One may have more than two dependent variables and the categories may be more than two also. In such complex cases, more than one discriminant functional variate can be derived. The number of variates that one can derive will always be less than the number of variables. P that is P minus 1. So if there are total number of variables is P, then the maximum functions uh, that can be derived from the data are P minus 1 or less than the number of categories that is K or K minus 1. Let us look into the predictive power of these discriminant functions that we arrive at. The aim of applying the discriminant functional analysis to the data is not to identify the significant differences among the means. We have already done that most of the time using MANOVA. The DFA or the discriminant functional analysis emphasizes the prediction of category membership by ascertaining the independent variables that significantly contribute to the discriminant functional variate. The two statistics that are useful in measuring the power of DF in their ability to discriminate among the groups are first the canonical correlation and the other one is the eigenvalue. We shall look into the canonical correlation what it is. A canonical correlation is a statistical technique 
that is applicable to a research situation in which one group of variable can be viewed as consequent upon or casually influ or causally influenced by the variables in the second group. The former being viewed as the dependent variables and the latter as the independent variable. A pair of linear functions, one for the dv or the dependent variable and the other for the iv that is the independent variable is constructed so that the correlation between them is maximized. These functions make a canonical variate pair and the correlation between them is the canonical correlation. The canonical correlation is the correlation between the discriminant function and scores on pi coding variable defining group membership. Let's look into the other factor that enhances the prediction power that is the eigenvalue. Eigenvectors are the coefficients of the discriminant functions. Each discriminant function that we extracted from the data set has an eigenvalue that is represented by lambda or the characteristic root and is shown by it can be achieved by using the formula given in equation 4. The readers have read Wilk's lambda in the module on MANOVA and lambda can be expressed in terms of eigenvalues as shown in equation 4. Here pi is pi that is 3.14 the constant value which is the product of d terms and eigenvalue is also shown. The eigenvalue gives the proportion of total variance that is accounted for by that particular discriminant function. The eigenvalues are important as they consolidate the variance in the vector matrix. At the same time, providing the statisticians with the linear combination of variables that contribute in it. The smaller the value of lambda, the greater is the power of discriminant function to discriminate among the groups. The types and assumptions of discriminant analysis. The discriminant analysis can be classified as direct DFA, hierarchical DFA and the stepwise DFA. These three types of DFA or discriminant functional analysis are exactly similar as they are in multiple regression. Remember the module on multiple regression? The direct DFA is same as the simultaneous multiple regression. All the independent variables are entered simultaneously in the equation and the ones that contribute to the functional variate the most are retained while others are successively weeded out. If the researcher wishes to adopt the DFA as a follow-up to MANCOVA or MANOVA, then the direct method of DFA is the most suitable one. The other method that is the hierarchical method of DFA uses some theory or collateral evidence to enter the variables in the equation. The researcher sets a schedule based on some theoretical inputs and on the basis of that the variables find their place in the regression equation. The stepwise DFA is the next one and in stepwise DFA we find that it has the maximum application which we find in the research and therefore it is the most commonly used technique one can say. The researcher used this statistical criteria and determines the order of entry of variables in the regression equation. Now these statistical criteria are decided by the researchers who know that the particular criteria would suit, uh, suit their research findings and therefore they are applied. The statistical criteria chosen to enter or remove the variables from the discriminant functional analysis can be Wilk's lambda value or if the lambda value is decreasing the DF is more effective in separating the groups. So the most popular method or the criteria that uh, a researcher would choose is Wilk's lambda and it is if the value is less then it would be more effective also. The assumptions of DFA 
the DFA carries a number of restrictive assumptions. Just like MANOVA and MANCOVA, some of the assumptions that we find are there in DFA, uh, DFA are multinormality. For applying the DFA to the data, it is imperative to assume that the data are multivariate normal. This implies that for a given set of value, for p minus 1 variables, the remaining set of variables is normally distributed. The technique used in DFA is mathematically robust and are capable of withstanding slight skewness in the data. However, to overcome this slight deviation from normalcy, the researcher must ensure that the sample sizes are sufficiently large. So, if you have a large sample size, you can overlook some skewness in the data and you can go for the robustness of DFA to tackle it. However, in a smaller sample size, the deviation from multivariate normality are quite possible and they have serious consequences and they would therefore result in type 1 error and the researcher should be careful for it. So it is always suggested that an optimally good sample size be chosen if one wants to apply the multivariate techniques. The next assumption is homogeneity of variance to covariance matrices. The variance covariance matrix must have the property of sphericity. That is, the covariance must be uniformly distributed across all the groups. This assumption gains all the more importance when the sample sizes are unequal. The presence of outliers in the data poses a serious potential threat to the authenticity of the authenticity of the results. It is best to eliminate the extreme values, if possible, from the data set to bring in validity to the results. One would remember from the MANOVA and MANCOVA uh, module that it is always suggested that the boxes M test may be carried out and its results be considered seriously. But again, the analyst must keep in mind that the boxes M test is a very sensitive one and provided the sample sizes are equal and large, a significant result can be ignored. The multicollinearity, the assumption of multicollinearity for DFA refers is important as multicollinearity refers to the condition where there is high intercorrelation among the independent variables. It is very important that the condition of multicollinearity be avoided here as no variable should be an exact linear function of any other variable, a condition known as singularity. So one should be uh, very careful about the multicollinearity assumption. The scale of measurement used? Mostly it is assumed that the independent variables used are quantitative in nature. But occasionally one may include qualitative independent variables also for DFA like sex, marital status, etc. They are also part of multiple regression. Using SPSS for DFA. Let us start the application by picking up a problem. A school counselor is interested in knowing if the scholastic and non-scholastic subjects studied at school level can help in predicting the choice of subjects at the college level. The, category, the subject categories at the college level are psychology, architecture and engineering and the dependent variables, they are the dependent variables also. The independent variables that are the scholastic and non-scholastic subject were total 10 in size in the school taken by the students measured by their school living exam results. So we looked at the school living examination results and the 10 subjects, the non-scholastic and scholastic included, which were part of the school living certificate were taken as the independent variable. Now the dependent variables are categorical and the independent variables are continuous in nature. The researcher took the data from 118 students. The steps would be first 
preparing the data view by entering the obtained data in the relevant rows and columns for SPSS. Exploring the data would be the next step. Once the data set has been prepared, the next step is to identify if there are any violations in the assumption of DFA in the data set. This can be achieved by checking for the extreme scores and the outliers using the explore command. So you go to the dialog box, click on explore, go to plot, display, drag the predictor variables name to the dependent list and all the independent variables. Remember those 10 scholastic and non-scholastic uh, subjects we had chosen, drag them to the factor list and click OK. Study the resulting box plots. If they are satisfactory, continue. Otherwise, the recommended corrective measures should be adopted. The readers are advised to refer to the multivariate statistical text for a deeper understanding of the corrective measures. However, some of them have already been discussed in the introductory modules on the multivariate methods of this paper also. So go to the introductory module of multivariate methods and the assumptions, violations and the corrected measures uh, associated to each one of them have been discussed there. The next step would be running the discriminant analysis. Once the data has been corrected for the violations in the assumptions and the analyst finds the data suitable enough, the next step is to run the discriminant analysis. For that, the following steps would be taken. Choose, analyze, classify and discriminant functional analysis. Transfer the dependent variables name. In this case, we take the subject choice in the college to the grouping variable. Go to defining range. In this case, there are three categories. So type one in the minimum and three in the maximum box. On the upper uh, right hand, of the discriminant functional analysis transfer dependent variable name in this case the subject choice in college to the grouping variable and go to define the range in this case there are three categories so type one in the minimum and three in the maximum box on the upper right hand of the discriminant functional analysis dialog box one finds buttons labeled as statistics and classify. The analyst must use them to open further useful outputs. Some of the chosen ones can be descriptive analysis, ANOVA, boxes M, etc. Click on classify the discriminant functional analysis. Classification dialog box would open and click on the method which is usually the stepwise method. So click on stepwise. The exhibit below shows the DFA dialog box for the grouping variables that is the study subjects with three levels and several independent variables using the stepwise method. Click on save, drag the cursor to the independent variables and transfer them to the independent box, OK and run the discriminant functional analysis. The output for discriminant analysis, that is the output of the DFA is shown in the left hand pane of the SPSS viewer. The exhibit shown below also shows the layout of the monitor screen showing the DFA output. The output may contain some unuseful information too and therefore not all would be needed. The group statistic, univariate ANOVA, Wilkes lambda. So the uh, researcher or the analyst should pick up the relevant statistic with care and caution. The percent variance of each discriminant function along with their level of significance, Wilkes lambda value, canonical correlations are some of the important ones that the analyst must focus on and pick up for analysis. The next step is predicting the group membership. Once the output has been searched for the relevant statistics and the redundant information is sidelined, the analyst comes to the original problem being investigated, that is to know if the scholastic and non-scholastic subjects studied at school level can help in predicting the choice of subjects at the college level. 
to compare the actual and the predicted subject of study one takes up the discriminant procedure. So for that we go to the steps again complete the DFA dialog box as in earlier step go to click save click predict group, uh, predicted group membership click continue and ok. The predicted group membership will appear in a new column labeled D is 1 in data view along with the prediction of all the other cases. Summary of the text. A dependent variable criteria can be predicted if one has knowledge on independent variables, regressors. Of course, both the regressors and the criterion have to be continuous data, but sometimes the research study requires the qualitative or the categorical dependent variables to be predicted. In such circumstances, two regression techniques are useful, logistic regression and discriminant analysis. The present module focuses on the DFA. The analyst is advised to use DFA when there are more variables which significantly predict the criteria and then the solution can be identifying the underlying dimensions and these linear combinations of the dependent variables are called the variates which are latent variables of the factors. These linear variates are then used to separate the persons into categories and groups. In order to generate the discriminant functions from the data a complex mathematical procedure is followed known as the maximization principle. This implies that the ratio of systematic to unsystematic variance is maximum for the first discriminant function. Of course, the subsequent functions derived will have smaller value of this ratio. The DFA emphasizes the prediction of category membership by ascertaining the independent variables that significantly contribute to the discriminant functions variate. The two statistics that are useful in measuring the power of DF in their ability to discriminate among the groups are canonical correlation and the eigenvalue. The discriminant analysis can be classified as direct DFA, hierarchical and the stepwise DFA. The DFA carries a number of restricted as restrictive assumptions just like MANOVA and MENCOVA. Some of the assumptions to be followed for DFA are multinormality, homogeneity of variance to covariance matrices, multicollinearity and the scale of measurement that is being used. The SPSS commands to apply the DFA to the data have also been discussed in the text by taking an example.